Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into another very interesting chunking strategy that is called as recursive chunking. If you remember in the previous video, we already have seen the fixed size chunking, wherein we have seen the in and out of it with a very interesting example along with its implementation. I hope everything was clear related to that. Now, in this particular video, we'll be focusing on the recursive chunking strategy. Along with that, we'll also look into the implementation of the recursive chunking, how we can create chunks with the help of recursive chunking way. So let's have a look into the official definition of recursive chunking. The definition says that recursive chunking is a method of splitting the text into chunks that aims to preserve the context and meaning by considering the structure of the text. So here it not only focuses on the size of each chunk, along with that it focuses on preservation of the meaning by considering the structure of the text. Here it gives the respect to the structure of the text. Now here it says that it preserves the context and meaning. This doesn't mean that it will take care that each and every chunk is semantically splitted. It doesn't mean like that. Here, the structure of every sentence will be preserved. Now, it doesn't mean that each and every chunk will be completely independent of the other chunks, like what we have in semantic chunking that we are going to look into upcoming video. Here, it only takes care of whatever chunk has got created that will be structure-wise complete. But it doesn't say that it will be semantically complete or independent of the other chunks. Don't worry if it is not clear. We'll be looking into ample examples through which everything will be clear. Now, here in this video, we'll be specifically looking into the recursive character text splitter, which is one of the module in Langchain. Now, how it works? It starts by splitting at the largest logical units, that is paragraphs. So basically, we'll be getting a text as an input. Now, the text can be an entire text file. Now, into that text file, there can be multiple paragraphs. So here, starts by splitting at the largest logical units like paragraphs and then recursively splits into smaller units. For example, sentences or words if necessary. So basically, it starts at the large scale and then as per the chunk size that is provided earlier for this particular splitter, it will split it recursively until it reaches some particular limit or I would say some particular threshold. And as I said, it will take care that structure wise each and every chunk will be complete. So I hope you must have got a basic idea of what exactly recursive chunking is. Now we'll be looking into the working of recursive chunking. So at the start, it will take a text input, the entire text that you want to split. Now once the input is taken, now after that we have to define our splitter with the parameters. Now here we already have seen these parameters in the previous video for fixed size chunking wherein we have seen the character text splitter module from Lamchi. Here also we have to define chunk size, overlap and separators. We know that chunk size defines the size that every chunk has to follow. How many characters a particular chunk should have is defined by chunk size. Then overlap takes care of the continuity between the chunks. Basically, some last characters from the previous chunk will get repeated as some first characters in the current chunk. So this is taken care by the overlap. Next, we have separators, which is again an optional parameter. Here, we can define some special patterns that our input might contain on the basis of which it will create chunks. It will split it on the basis of the special pattern that we provide as a separator. Now, once our splitter is defined as per the parameters, it will now start the process at the back end. So how the process starts? It starts by splitting the text at the largest unit that is paragraphs. So it will take the entire file as an input. It will check for the paragraphs. It will first split on the basis of paragraph. Then it will look for the chunk size. Obviously, if the chunk size that was defined is, is lesser than the paragraph that was considered at that particular moment, it will then recursively split it into smaller units. For example, sentences or words. So if the chunk size based on the paragraphs is too large, then it will recursively split it into smaller units. Now this process will continue 
until it reaches to a particular size which will match the chum size it may not match the exact size as that of the chum size but yes it will be approximately same but it won't exceed the specified chum size it can be equal or lesser than that but it won't exceed the specified chum size and of course if the overlap is defined it will be maintaining that too now you must be wondering that what exactly is the difference between fixed size chunking and recursive chunking it looks somewhat same then what is the difference don't worry about that once we will look into the implementation of it i will show you the exact difference between both of them for now i hope the working of recursive chunking is crystal clear to you all now let's implement this recursive chunking with the help of the recursive character text splitter from langchain this is going to clear all your doubts now let's implement recursive chunking now you remember in the previous video we have seen these things here we have used the character text splitter method we have defined our custom splitter and in this we have kept the chunk size as 10 chunk overlap as 2 and separator as empty first and then we intentionally defined some separator pattern through which we have seen the usage of separator also we have taken this particular text as an input and we divided this into chunks like this i hope this was clear to you all we also seen some observations that each and every chunk was almost having the same size that is the total number of characters 10 which was the chunk size we also have seen that when the chunk was getting created it didn't take care of the completeness of the word if at the middle of any word the chunk size was getting fulfilled it stopped there and moved the other characters in the next chunk something like this here you can see the word isn't was a complete word but in the first chunk we couldn't see that completeness of the word isn't here the word was also getting splitted so that were some of the observations that we found out for the character text splitter or i would say the fixed size chunking strategy now let's implement the recursive chunking strategy so for that i am going to import the recursive character text splitter from langchain.txt splitter now for installing langchain you should run this command pip install langchain along with that i also have installed langchain hyphen community after this you can simply run this particular cell now using the recursive character text splitter will define our custom splitter so let's simply take the same code that we already have defined for the character text splitter here we simply define the custom splitter along with the required parameters so let's simply do that for the recursive character text splitter also so under the recursive character text splitter we'll define the chunk size to be 10 the chunk overlap to be 2 that means the last two characters from the previous chunk will be repeated as the first two characters in the current chunk now here under recursive character text splitter we have a different name for the parameter separator and that is nothing but separators we have to add an s and here the separators takes a list here we can define the list of patterns through which we have to split the text that we have provided as an input but for now let's keep the separators empty so that is why i have defined an empty list over here now let's simply execute this particular cell and our our custom splitter will be ready now once this splitter is ready we can simply create chunks we'll call the split text function from this splitter object and we'll simply split the text that is our input so we'll take the same input that we had earlier that is this particular string let's remove this special pattern which we intentionally inserted in the earlier video just to make you understand how the separators works so the text is success isn't just about what you achieve it's about how you inspire others to dream learn and grow along the way we'll take the same input and we'll pass it in this particular function once we execute this particular cell our chunks will be ready now let's check how our chunks looks like and here we have got our chunks so here you can see each and every chunk is taking care of the chunk size along with that it also takes care of the chunk overlap now you must be wondering that why the first chunk is not having 10 characters inside it here you can see 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन ओनली सेवन कैरेक्टर्स आर प्रेजेंट इन द वेरी फर्स्ट चंक नॉट लेट मी टेल यू द रीजन आफ्टर दिस सक्सेस वर्ड दैट इज आफ्टर दिस सेवन कैरेक्टर्स वी हैव अ स्पेस दैट बिकम्स अवर एट्थ कैरेक्टर एंड आफ्टर दिस एट्थ कैरेक्टर वी हैव दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्ड दैट इज इज इट नाउ दिस इज इंट वर्ड इज इट सेल्फ अ कंप्लीट वर्ड रिकर्सिव कैरेक्टर टेक्स प्लेटर मेक्स श्योर that the completeness of the word is not compromised if it was made in a mechanism to break the words then it would have provided this particular substring as the first chunk which the character text splitter did you can see here that the first chunk contains the word success and is here is is nothing but a substring of the word isn't it didn't take care of the completeness of the word whether it becomes meaningless or not it doesn't care about it it will break and it will break the words and it will put it into chunks just to fulfill the chunk size but in case of recursive character text splitter it takes care of the structure of the words it won't break it just to fulfill the chunk size so that is why the first chunk is not having the chunk size as 10 now let's focus on the chunk overlap by the first two chunks are not following chunk overlap mechanism now according to the chunk overlap mechanism the last two characters s and s should have should have got repeated as the first two characters in the next chunk but this didn't happen because there is no meaning of the word substring ss here because our chunk overlap is very small it will require to break the word to get the substring ss as the first two characters in the next chunk but according to the rule of recursive character text splitter it looks for the completeness of the word it won't break the word just to fulfill the parameter list that we have defined and that is why there is no repetition of the last two characters in the next chunk now recursive character text splitter won't work good in case when you have a very small chunk overlap or a very small chunk size you will get to know its results when you will increase the chunk size or the chunk overlap let's define the chunk size to be 100 and chunk overlap to be 20 and let's now run these cells so now here you can see that we have got two chunks the first chunk is this which almost fulfills the chunk size that is defined 100 and the remaining text is put into the next chunk but here you can see according to the chunk overlap 20 characters that is you can see here dream learn and dream learn and the last three words are repeated in the next chunk so you can clearly see that chunk overlap also works in recursive character text splitter here it works intelligently it won't break the word because it will end up with a substring which won't be having any meaning there is no meaning of it and that is how recursive character text splitter works do you want to check out this attractive funny memes then what are you waiting for these are just a glimpse of the memes that i have created on my instagram page you can find the link to my instagram handle in the description box please visit the link and do watch all these interesting funny memes these are not just memes these memes and reels contains technical information here i try to relate memes with the technological concepts so please do appreciate that by watching all those and if you love it please hit the follow button now here you can observe that whatever chunks that we have got is in the form of a list this particular list doesn't contain any information about the origin of from where this particular chunk has got created or what is the location of this particular chunk in the actual knowledge base here we only have the content present inside that particular chunk now there is a document object present in lanchain which is a ready made object you don't have to customly create it that particular document object will contain the page content which is nothing but the actual content that you want to store in the chunk as well as along with that it will also contain a metadata parameter which will store the origin of that particular chunk 
by default it will store the file name that you are providing as an input that means from where file this particular content has got inserted as in the chunk now for now we just have this particular variable text in this particular variable only we have defined this particular content now first let me tell you how this document object get gets created with the help of the create document function now here since we have only provided a variable in which we have defined the content we won't be getting any metadata let me show you that so we have something called as create documents function present inside this splitter that we have created and in that we'll provide the text which is this particular text now there is a condition that we cannot simply provide this particular text as it is because this is in the form of string we have to provide it in the form of list because here it thinks that the user will provide multiple such strings so that is why here you have to provide the string or i would say the text enclosed inside square bracket that means inside list now let's execute this particular cells and let's see how the chunks are getting created now you can see over here we have got the same two chunks but this time we have got our chunk in the form of document object each and every chunk is a document object inside this document object you can clearly see that we have page content which contains the actual content present inside our text and apart from page content we don't have any other parameter over here in the document object why because we only provided the text as a simple string so there will be no metadata stored for this particular string now let me show you how this create document function can be very much useful because of the metadata parameter in this document object now i have simply created a text file called as p.txt and inside this particular file i have simply pasted the same content that we stored inside the variable text now what we'll do is we we'll simply load this particular t.txt file and then we'll create chunks from it now inside blank chain we have multiple document loaders we can access that from this document loaders module now since we have to import a simple text file we'll simply import the text loader from blank chain now this text loader will load the file that we have we have to just provide the name of that particular file first we'll create an object of this particular text loader class so let's create that let me write loader equals text loader and inside this we just have to pass on the name of our file or i would say the path to our file that is t.txt and then we we'll simply load this particular loader object and we'll store it inside a variable called as document now this will create document of whatever text file we have provided so let's execute this cell and here if i show you what exactly is present inside this document variable you can clearly see that our content in the text file has now got converted into a document object which has page content and apart from this it also has the metadata that is source from where that particular page content has got retrieved now i think we won't be able to see the entire document object let me show you by simply pasting it here okay now you can clearly see that it also has a metadata parameter which contains a dictionary which stores the source as the key and the value contains the actual file name or i would say the path to that particular file from where this particular page content has got retrieved now this metadata is going to be very much useful whenever you are dealing with a large knowledge base whenever you have to find out what exactly is the root cause of the error that you have got in the retrieval process you can simply use this particular metadata variable to check what exactly is the root cause now once you got your document ready you can simply create chunks out of it now the custom splitter that we already have created will use the same one and instead of using the create documents 
function. We can simply use the split documents function because our document has already got created. You can see this is already in the form of document object. So we'll use this split documents function. Inside this, we'll simply pass on the document. Now we are not supposed to pass the document in a list format because already we have this in a list format. If you carefully look, here we have it in list format. So, so there is no need to include this in square bracket. Just while creating the documents from a simple string, it's mandatory to include it in a square bracket. Now let's execute this and let's see the chunks. Okay, so here you can see the chunks has got created the same chunks we have got, but this time we have got each chunk in the form of document object. And along with that, it also has the metadata, that is the source from which file this particular content has got retrieved, that is t.txt. Now, since we have only one file here, that is why in both the chunks, we have got the source as t.txt. But whenever we deal with multiple files, at that time, this becomes very much useful. So I hope the recursive chunking strategy is crystal clear to you all. Now, let's see when to use this recursive chunking strategy. So first, when we deal with text, where maintaining the context and meaning is very much crucial. As we already have seen, the recursive chunking not only splits the text based on the chunk size, but it will also take care of the completeness of the words that are present inside our context. It won't create a meaningless chunk. Next, when splitting the large documents or articles. Yes, of course, recursive chunking is very much useful whenever we are dealing with large amount of documents, or I would say knowledge bases. For natural language processing tasks that require meaningful text segments. As already discussed, it creates meaningful text. But along with this, note one thing, it won't create semantic chunks. Here, whatever chunks have got created, it will be meaningful, but it doesn't mean that every single chunk will be independent of each other. So I hope when to use recursive chunking strategy is clear to you all. Now let's see why to use the recursive chunking strategy. First, for context preservation. It ensures chunks maintain logical meaning and structure. The structure completeness of the chunk is one of the special feature of recursive chunking. So, it preserves the context. Next, flexibility. It adapts to various text structures and sizes. Whatever is the type of your text, or I would say whatever is the type or size of your input, it is very much flexible to all. Next is the improved readability. It produces more readable and coherent chunks compared to strict character splitting. So I hope the in and out of recursive chunking strategy is clear to you all. With this, we come to the end of the video. I'm damn sure you might have loved this particular video. And in the upcoming videos, we are going to look into more chunking strategies in detail. And I assure you that they are going to be very much useful and interesting. Stay tuned for that. For more such videos, you like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, hit the bell icon. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Please join me on Telegram. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Mate.